Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. This behind me is my shop. It's really awesome. It has metalworking downstairs and woodworking upstairs, but there's something it doesn't have. Let me show it to you real quick. It's a bit of a mess right now. I've got blacksmithing stuff over here, machining stuff there. There's a mill and a lathe. My welder, oxyacetylene, plenty of workbench. So this is all my metalworking stuff. And man, I really need to clean this thing up. Uh, here's all my woodworking stuff. Bandsaw, belt sander, there's a wood lathe over there, a couple of table saws, planer, miter saw, radial arm saw, joiner, and a router table and then dust collection. So yeah, I got metalworking, woodworking, great workshop. What more could I need? Well, what I don't have is a place to work on vehicles. Over the years, I've been accumulating more and more farm equipment, and of course, a lot of it needs repair. My truck, my cars, and I don't have a good place to do that. I do have a concrete slab. It has a little bit of overhang. The reason I put that overhang there is just to keep water from trying to get in these doors because these are not sealed doors really. I, I made these and there's little gaps that water could get in. I need a place where I can pull a vehicle underneath, not have to worry about it raining or snowing or something like that. And also give me shade so that in the heat of the summer, I have a reasonable place where I can work on things. I really regret not making this overhang much larger. That's really what I need. So I need it much bigger, I need it high, I need to be able to pull my dump truck and my excavator underneath. So this is going to be a really big project, and I build things alone. So, you know, I decided I'm just going to go ahead and hire a contractor and have them come in with a crew, and they can put up this structure for... Yeah, if you've watched my channel for any length of time, you know that's BS. Yeah, I'm going to build this myself, and we're going to build it out of trees. I'm going to cut down the trees, we're going to mill the lumber, and we're going to put up a huge shed roof here, which is going to be a great addition to this shop. So let's get to work. First step is design. I use Google SketchUp, I make a model, and that gives me a cut list of the lumber I need and helps me work out any details that I haven't thought of. Next step, I need some trees. I was able to build this structure with three large oak trees. I have a whole video on how I cut these down when I'm making logs for lumber. If you want to see that, just watch the link here. Tree number three is the biggest of the bunch. Look at the size of that sucker. Now that the trees are down, I drag them over to my sawmill so that I can make my lumber. I'm starting with the rafters. I need 56 2x8s that are greater than 12 feet long. I cut my logs off at 14 to 15 feet. And of course, these are going to be true 2 inches wide and 8 inches deep. When squaring off the log, you often get slices of wood that have bark on one or both sides. And sometimes they knock over your darn camera. But we'll deal with those cutoffs later. That's an 8 inch cant, so now I can just slice 2 inch boards off. I'm making purlins out of this section. These are 1x6s that will support the metal on the roof. 
Now I take my two inch cutoffs from earlier and square them up, removing the live edges. And end up with another good roof rafter. So that's a little punky there, but thankfully it's kind of towards the edge of the log. Check out the grain right here. I actually need some big beams. I need them to be eight by 12. So right now I am 16 tall and 10 wide. So I'm just gonna cut that down to an eight by 12 and 12 feet ends like right there. So all that will go away. It's got a defect there, but I should be able to cut that out and all of this bark will get cut off. All right, there we go. That is eight wide, 12 tall, and it does have some defects in it, but by my calculations, the beam could actually be six wide and 10 tall. So this is way stronger than it needs to be. And uh, I like overbuilding things and you never have to worry about it. I got these boards out of it and I'm gonna rip those into some rafters. got the butt log sitting here on the mill. That is a big log. How many uh, rafters do you think I'm going to get out of this one log? All right, so I have it squared off. I have 16 inches of depth here, and that means I can make two eight inch cants, and then when I flip those on their side, I'm going to be able to cut two by eights. So all of this is going to be two by eights. Here's the two eight inch cants. Just have to stand these up on end and then cut rafters out of them. I had a lot of footage of sawmilling all this lumber that I am unable to find for some reason. I have no idea what happened to it, so sorry about that. So final tally, I got four layers of five plus one. So 21 rafters, and then I also got a couple purlins. I still need more wood though, so... I got all the wood milled. That is the posts there, and then there's a wide beam and then two other beams. So post and beams there. Here's all the rafters, and then I've got a fair amount of purlins behind. So these will be drying for a while before I start construction. All right, so first things first, I gotta take this down. So let's get rid of that. This is reminding me why I'm doing this partially. The main reason is I need a place to work on things where I don't have to worry about the weather. A little bit of rain or something isn't gonna get in the way of, of what I'm doing. But uh, this area is just intolerable in the afternoon. The afternoon sun hits this white building, it reflects down onto this concrete, and I swear it feels like it's 10 degrees hotter, if not more, than everywhere else. It's bright, hot, ugh. I mean, it's only 80 degrees right now, and. 
I'm anywhere else, it's fine. But if I'm standing right there, it's just brutal. See, the new roof is going to cut in higher than this one and I can't just measure up off the concrete because the concrete is sloped. It drops as it's going that direction. So I need to establish where the new roof is going to cut in and get it level. So I've got my old fashioned transit set up and I've shot a level line. So I've got that mark right there and I've got marks all across the building at exactly the same plane. So that's going to help me determine where my roof needs to cut into the wall here. That is the bottom of my rafters. So now I'm screwing on a ledger board. The rafters are going to sit on top of this, so this needs to be firmly attached. And coming up here, one of these screws hits a wire and causes a short in my shop. I have a whole video on fixing that when I discover it later. Man down. This drill was getting old anyway. So I took this battery apart and I think this is the only actual broken issue there. That wire needs to be connected obviously to the pack. So I bet you if I fix that, this is going to work. This is a tiny connector and I don't have, I mean, that's the smallest one I have. It's not even close. So I think I'm just going to solder it. This side broke, so a little duct tape will fix that. I still have the screws on this side. Now, does this still work? Look at that. Back in business.
that went kind of slow. I kind of know what I'm up against now. I think the next ones will go a little faster. I'm trying a different strategy with this one. I'm putting the steel pin and the treated wood block in first, and then I'm just going to set the post on top. The main purpose of this pin is to protect the structure from idiots like me. Even if it's run into by a tractor or a vehicle, it's still not going to be able to knock the bottom out of position. Okay, the posts are up. I don't know if it's coming across on camera. These posts are huge. They are eight by eight, 14 feet long. Uh, I'm gonna be cutting them off uh, at the right height, of course, and putting beams on top. But even just the posts feel very dangerous. You gotta make sure those things don't fall. If they hit you, you're gonna have a bad day. I'm about to put some very heavy beams up on top those right there. I brace the heck out of them. See this one I've got a diagonal that way. I've got a diagonal that way. That building obviously is not going anywhere so that means that post isn't going anywhere. It's locked in at the bottom and then I've got a diagonal going the other way. They're tied together. This one again two diagonals back to the building tied together. This one just one diagonal to the building but it's also got one, two, three boards on it. And this diagonal here is my main brace against racking like that. And then there's an additional diagonal up there and tied back both ways. So those are nice and solid. They are not going anywhere. So now what do we do? I need first to establish a level line across those posts. I can't use the concrete, the concrete's not level. The easiest would be a laser level. I don't have a laser level because I don't do this kind of stuff often enough to justify spending $500 on one. But I do have this transit. It's actually what I use to build this building, leveling the footers and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, let me show you what's going on here. This is basically a scope with a little reticle in it, a little horizontal line. As long as you get this perfectly level, you can look through it and establish a level line, you know, almost any distance. Obviously there's some error to it if you go out too far. You level it with that bubble right there. As long as the circle, the bubble is in the middle of the black circle, then you're good. Don't know if it's seeing, I can see the horizontal line there. And can you see that ruler? I put that up so that I can read it from a distance and mark directly beside it. I've already marked this one. There's a little crow's, crow's foot there. So that is all the way on the far post there. So there's the ruler with the mark beside it. And that is just establishing a level. That's not any, any height for my project, but I need to know a line that is level across all the posts. There's one, let's do the other three. First, I clamp the ruler in place where I'll be able to see it through the transit. Then after reading the ruler, I mark right beside it on the post. Did I get it? It looks like I'm a hair low, but that's less than a sixteenth of an inch. For what I'm doing, that is not going to matter. I think it's interesting to understand how you do this. So I established a level mark here. I also brought it over to the building and I measured up to my ledger board. So that establishes a dimension, let's call that 76 inches, between the bottom of my rafter and the level line that I just put on my posts. Well, I want a 112 pitch plus a little bit. So over 12 feet, instead of coming down 12 inches, I'm gonna come down 13 will give me just slightly more pitch than 112. So if I come down, what did I say, 76? So if I come down 13 inches, 
that would be 63. So if I measure up 63, that will be that will be my roof pitch. That'll be the bottom of the rafter. Well, the rafter is sitting on a beam. The beams are actually 12 inches, like on the money. So if I come down 12 inches from that 63, that's 51. That will give me the top of the post. So from that le level line, I've established a dimension to go up on all of them the same, top of the post. When I set the beams on there, the top of the beam, which is the bottom of the rafter, will be 13 inches below that line on the ledger board. Clear as mud. So after cutting something like that, you're never going to be perfectly in line. That handsaw is the exact same width as my blade, which is nice, but I've got like a little lip there. This one's actually pretty good. So I just take the belt sander and clean that up. So after belt sanding, there is a tiny, tiny lip there, but that's it. That's good enough. Okay, they're all cut off and they all line up. He's got velvet on his antlers. What you doing, Buck? Come on, man, run away. I want to film it. Things run like they're on pogo sticks. Ruh -roh. So the tractor can't reach up there, and I thought that might happen. I'm thinking this is going to be the hardest one because I've got this wall down here in the way and it won't let me square up to that. And even, you know, being able to do the swing, I just can't get in a good position. So I've got that one on. I'm going to put on a couple scrap boards that will keep that from being able to come off. And then I should be able to back up and get this one on. Hopefully. Maybe. Man, if that beam comes tumbling down, that's going to be exciting.
So I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the decisions here. Those eight by eight posts really don't need to be that big, but when you're building something out of, out of lumber that you mill yourself, and it's not dry yet, they can twist, they can warp, they can crack. Instead of doing six by sixes, doing eight by eights kind of guarantees that there's not gonna be any issues. If it warps or twists, it's still gonna be plenty strong. The beams up there, I could have made those eight inches wide, 12 inches tall. They really only need to be six by 10. Those are six by 12. Just decided it wasn't worth the wood for that, that I'd rather make rafters out of that extra wood. But this one is eight by 12 and that's going up here. The reason is because I wanted a place I can hook a hoist and pull an engine out of my dump truck or something like that. So I'm going to have a place where I can lift pretty much anything I want. Um, <laughs> you're not breaking that beam. I'm using the chainsaw on this because this doesn't need to be nearly as precise as the top of the posts. Okay, how do we make a rafter? Well, the first thing I did is I took a board, I estimated what the angle would be, and I cut it off at five degrees. And that was not perfect, it was pretty close. So I brought that up here, I marked where it was off. Now I also cut the far end, and that defined where the, the rafter would sit on that beam. I couldn't shorten this end without uh, changing because then if I slid it this way, the rafter would actually drop because it's already got that cut on the beam. So I'm just going to use that rafter like it is. Uh, it'll work. It's a little ugly, but then I use that to make this rafter, which is right. You can see it's hitting the beam just like I want and the angle's right and the crow's foot here is right. Now this does weaken the beam a little bit. One thing I could mention here, these are two by eights. These are a true two by eight and a normal two by eight is seven and a quarter. Uh, and this is much more than seven and a quarter there that's remaining. Now that I've got this one cut, this I'm gonna mark as my template and I'll use this as a pattern for all the other ones. Lots of rafters to cut. It's much easier to do when you guys aren't in the way. Man, you didn't even act like you were going to move. I see how you are.
it's not making a ton of shade right now, but I just need to sit there and cut rafters. So that's perfect. And as the evening gets on, the sun comes more and more at an angle. So it'll make more and more shade for me. So uh, that's going to keep me productive. So most boards have a crown that is a slight curve as you go down. And I'm putting, this is just standard construction practice. I'm putting all the crowns up. So this will be the roof surface. This will be the underside of the rafter. Kind of makes it so that as it flexes, it straightens itself out. I think it would hold even if you put the crowns down, but you do want them all the same. Otherwise you're gonna have a lot of up and down in your roof. Well, folks, I'm afraid I have good news and bad news. The bad news is, this is the part where I take a nosedive off this beam, land on my head, and kill myself. <laughs> and now I'm narrating about it. Okay, yeah, that didn't happen. Uh, no, the bad news is, uh, I have to split this into two videos. We have a lot more work to do. I've got four more posts to set, a whole other line of rafters to set, and these will be slightly different because they'll have rafter tails. One of the posts doesn't have a base. I'm gonna to have to use concrete and stone and make a base for that. We have to do the roof purlins, the roof, 
the fascia, the rake board, and a last minute design change means I'm going to be using this steel beam right here. Can you imagine why I would want a steel beam? And we're still not done. I've got wiring, lights, and I even have a plan for enclosing the sides fairly easily. So a whole lot more to come. Now here's the good news is I guarantee you it's going to be next week. I've already completed the structure. I just need to edit the footage, which will be quite a large task because there's a lot of it, but I will have this video out for you next week. So thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next week.